What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10 00 certification. So, Let's get into it. In this video, you're gonna learn about routing protocols such as distant vectors, link state, hybrid, static, dynamic, and default routing protocols. Let's talk about routing protocols. So a routing protocol specifies how routers communicate with each other to distribute information that enables them to select routes between nodes on a computer network. Routers perform the traffic directing functions on the internet. Data packets are forwarded through the networks of the internet from router to router until they reach their destination computer. Routing algorithms determine the specific choice of route. Each router has a prior knowledge only of networks attached to it directly. A routing protocol shares this information first amongst immediate neighbors and then throughout the entire network. This way routers gain knowledge of the topology of the network and the ability of routing protocols to dynamically adjust to changing conditions such as disabled connections and components and route data around obstructions is what gives the internet its fault tolerance and high availability. Let's talk about distance vector routing protocol. So a distance vector routing protocol in data networks determines the best route for data packets based on distance. Distance vector routing protocols measure the distance by the number of routes a packet has to pass where one router counts as one hop. Some distance vector protocols also take into account network latency and other factors that influence traffic on a given route. To determine the best route across a network, routers on which a distance vector protocol is implemented, they exchange information with one another, usually routing tables plus hop counts for destination networks and possibly other traffic information. And distance vector routing protocols also require that a router inform its neighbors or other routers of the network topology changes periodically. A form of a distance vector routing protocol is called RIP or routing information protocol. So the routing information protocol, this is one of the oldest distance vector routing protocols, which employs the hop count as a routing metric. RIP prevents routing loops by implementing a limit on the number of hops allowed in a path from source to destination. And the largest number of hops allowed for RIP is 15 hops, which limits the size of networks that RIP can support. The next type of distance vector routing protocol is EIGRP or Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. So EIGRP, this is an advanced distance vector routing protocol that is used on computer networks for automating routing decisions and configuration. The protocol was designed by Cisco Systems as a proprietary tool that was only available on Cisco routers. Functionality of EIGRP was converted to an open standard in 2013. EIGRP is used on a router to share routes with other routers with the same autonomous system. Unlike other well-known routing protocols such as RIP, EIGRP only sends incremental updates reducing the workload on the router and the amount of data that needs to be transmitted. EIGRP ultimately eases the workload on a network admin so they don't have to configure changes to the routing table manually. Next, let's talk about link state routing protocols. So link state routing protocols are one of the two main classes of routing protocols used in packet switching networks for computer communications, the other being distance vector routing protocols. The link state protocol is performed by every switching node in the network. The basic concept of link state routing is that every node constructs a map of the connectivity to the network in the form of a graph showing which nodes are connected to which other nodes. Each node then independently calculates the next best logical path from it to every possible destination in the network. Each collection of best paths will then form each node's routing table. This contrasts with distance vector routing protocols, which work by having each node share its routing table with its neighbors. In a link state protocol, the only information passed between nodes is connectivity related, and link state algorithms are sometimes characterized informally as each router quote unquote 
quote, telling the world about its neighbors. So a type of link state routing protocol is OSPF or open shortest path first. So open shortest path first, this is a routing protocol for the internet protocol networks. It uses a link state routing algorithm and falls into the group of interior gateway protocols operating within a single autonomous system and routing protocols like OSPF calculate the shortest route to a destination through the network based on an algorithm. All right, let's talk about hybrid routing protocols. So hybrid routing protocols commonly referred to as balanced hybrid routing. This is a combination of distance vector routing, which works by sharing its knowledge of the entire network with its neighbors and link state routing, which works by having the routers tell every router on the network about its closest neighbors. Hybrid routing protocol uses distant vectors for more accurate metrics to determine the best paths to destination networks and report routing information only when there is a change in the topology of the network. Hybrid routing allows for rapid convergence but requires less processing power and memory as compared to link state routing. Let's talk about a type of hybrid routing protocol known as BGP or border gateway protocol. So border gateway protocol, this is a standardized exterior gateway protocol designed to exchange routing and reachability information amongst autonomous systems on the internet. BGP is classified as a path vector routing protocol as well. And it makes routing decisions based on paths, network policies, or rule sets configured by a network administrator. Another way to think about BGP to think of it as the postal service of the internet. When someone drops a letter into a mailbox, the postal service processes that piece of mail and chooses a fast, efficient route to deliver that letter to its recipient. Similarly, when someone submits data across the internet, BGP is responsible for looking at all of the available paths that data could travel and picking the best route, which usually means hopping between autonomous systems. Let's talk about some routing types. And the first one is static routing. So static routing, this is a form of routing that occurs when a router uses a manually configured routing entry rather than information from dynamic routing traffic. In many cases, static routes are manually configured by a network administrator by adding entries into a routing table, though this may not always be the case. And some of the advantages of static routing are as follows. You have no routing overhead for router CPU, which means a cheaper router can be used to do the routing. It adds security because only administrators can allow routing to particular networks only and there is no bandwidth usage between the routers. Some of the disadvantages are for a larger network it is a hectic task for an admin to manually add each router to the network in the routing table of each router and the admin should have good knowledge of the topology. If a new admin comes along then he or she has to manually add each route so he or she should have a very good knowledge of the routes of the topology. Next we have dynamic Dynamic routing and dynamic routing. This is a process where a router can forward data via a different route or given destination based on the current conditions of the communication circuits within a system. The term is most commonly associated with data networking to describe the capability of a network to route around damage, such as loss of a node or connection between nodes. So as long as other path choices are available, dynamic routing allows many routes as possible to remain valid in response to change. Change. And some of the advantages of dynamic routing are as follows. It's easy to configure and it's more effective at selecting the best route to a destination remote network and also for discovering remote networks. And some of the disadvantages are it consumes more bandwidth for communicating with other neighbors and is less secure than static routing. And then we have default routing. So default routing, this is a configuration of the internet protocol that establishes a forwarding rule for packet where no specific address of a next hop host is available from the routing table or other routing mechanisms. The default route is generally the address of another router, which treats the packet the same way. So if a route matches, the packet is forwarded accordingly. Otherwise, the packet is forwarded to the default route of that router. And the device to which the default route points is often called the default gateway. And it often carries out other functions such as packet filtering or proxy server operations. All right, so that is my quick little class. So let's go ahead and get into some of this outstanding check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which of the following refers to a type of routing protocol that determines the best route for data packets based on the lowest number of hops? Is it hybrid, link state, distance vector, or dynamic? 
And the correct answer would be, this would be a distance vector. Let's go to the next question. A type of routing protocol that calculates the best path between source and destination nodes based on a map of network connectivity between nodes is called what? Is it dynamic, link state, static, or distance vector? And the correct answer would be, this is a link state routing protocol. And the final question is, a manually configured routing table entry is referred to as what? Is it a static route, dynamic route, hybrid route, or a default route? So a manually configured routing table. This is called what? And the correct answer is, this would be a static route. So in summary, we have talked about various routing protocols such as distant vector, link state, hybrid, static, dynamic, and default routing protocols. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like, share, and drop a comment. But most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10 dash zero zero seven certification and until next video ladies and gentlemen peace